Good morning. My name is Michael Fleming, and I'm joined today with Zico Johnstone and Ishan Kalpo. Our advisor is Dr. Tosinobu, and uh, for our project, we'll be discussing the cardboard payload delivery drill. So for our project, we wanted to design, manufacture, and assemble an unmanned cardboard aircraft capable of delivering a small payload and uh, it has to be, we want it to use sustainable and eco-friendly materials and we want it to be able to be rapidly assembled and deployed. So for the motivation and goals for our project, we wanted our, uh, our aircraft to be unmanned, low cost and eco-friendly, as well as being able to provide aid to remote or dangerous areas. In addition, we want a sustainable design to allow for accessibility in locations around the world. Some of the existing alternatives that we've looked into are the zipline delivery drone. It's a drone that delivers a, a payload via a parachute drop. Also, we've looked into the DARPA cardboard drone, which is released from a larger aircraft and glides down to its destination without a propeller. So for our project, we'll be discussing, uh, we'll be using a flying wing design. Flying wings are characterized as not having a definitive fuselage or tail. Some of the advantages that wing, a flying wing has is that they have greater efficiency since they do not have any non-lift producing surfaces. Also, they don't have to worry about wing tail uh, vortices since it doesn't have a tail. And a disadvantage is that you need a large angle of attack to take off and land. So for our aircraft, we need it to be waterproof since cardboard becomes very weak when it's soaked with water. So we need to uh, apply a hydrophobic surface to the airframe. And this can be done by applying a hydrophobic spray. So for our first design alternative, we considered a delta wing design. The delta wing is the easiest to manufacture since it can be uh, folded out of a single rectangular piece of cardboard. However, it is inefficient due to the very large surface area, which produces a lot of drag. For our second design alternative, we consider the swept wing design. The swept wing is more efficient than the delta wing. However, it is more complex to manufacture than the delta wing design. For our third design alternative, we are considering the swept wing with a front mounted motor. The front mounted motor has a disadvantage as being more complex to assemble and it is uh, vulnerable to landing uh, for the motor. For our final conceptual design, we're using the rear mounted swept wing design. Our rear mounted motor uh, is, it allows for cleaner air over the wing and for the motor to be protected during landing. For our components, we chose to use a brushless motor because of its high reliability and high efficiency in the movement. We also chose to do it for lithium polymer battery because it has high energy output and high power, power and capability. For propeller, we found that a large two-bladed propeller with a large diameter is the most efficient for this application, but due to our size constraints and our limitations in space of our surface, we found that we may have to increase the amount of blades to decrease the diameter of the propeller. By doing this, we reduce the efficiency. Some related, related standards that we found is the active aid. We use this to for the flight rules and, and aircraft arrivalness. We also have the ASTM, which we use for materials, the AFCC for all the flight controllers, the AMA for the pilot, and the hydrophobic for other electrical components. For structural design and analysis, we, we are going to use SOLIDWORKS, but due to the non isotropicness of the materials, we have, to include, we have to include our own parameters. We also use hand calculations and compare the results. For the aerodynamic performance, we use XFLR5 to create the airfoils, but this, when it comes to manufacturing this, it's going to be difficult due to material rigidity to go. So for our initial prototype construction, we decided to place the cardboard under various loads to see how well it handles different weights and how well we can basically hand launch the plane with different weights. Um, we also want to use flight mechanics and our initial constraints to come up with an ideal wing platform. Under initial constraints, we mean that we want the airframes to be stored as flat cardboard pieces stacked on top of each other, and then just easily grab one, fold it, and deploy it quickly. Um, 
The advantage we have is that the cardboard allows for rapid prototyping. So if you want to make quick, small changes, we can easily grab a new piece of cardboard and build a new airframe with the changes. We started with some uh, simple stability analysis by comparing airfoils. Uh, the top airfoil is the Appler 423, which is an airfoil we have hands-on experience with through the Aerospace Engineering Club. The other two airfoils are approaches of airfoils you may find when folding the cardboard into an airframe shape. That's what we found through our own experimentation. We compared the glide ratio versus angle of attack because our use case for this aircraft is to have it launched uh, by hand, have it fly up to a certain altitude, and then have it glide down to its final location. So we're looking for an ideal glide ratio. <coughs> We chose for the lowest uh, performing airfoil, which is the Road St. Genesee 32, because we want to make sure that it performs well even under the worst case scenario. So for this analysis, we use the airfoil to apply it to our final conceptual design and run a stability analysis using XFLR5. And what we were looking for was a pitching moment versus angle of attack that reduced as angle of attack increases and also a negative pitching moment. What this means is that uh, the aircraft has a tendency to self-stabilize as it uh, has a increasing or decreasing angle of attack. So for our global awareness, we're taking into account that the airframe will be used for different purposes in different locations around the world, such as in the United States, it'll likely be used for commercial applications by delivering goods to consumers whereas it will be used for uh, delivering uh, humanitarian aid to people in need in third world countries. For a global perspective, we're taking into account that the end user will be a novice user with limited aerodynamic experience. Therefore, we wanna make sure the design is flexible and simple. For our global engagement, we're making sure to put clear instructions and markings on the aircraft. So for example, lines where to fold the airframe, uh, also markings to where to place the air, uh, the uh, payload, also markings to stay clear of the propeller, and we're also including a multilingual manual. So we performed a cost analysis, taking into account the cardboard, the electronics, and the hydrophobic coating. It came out to $148. We compared that to our competitor Zipline, which had $25 million in funding. Unfortunately, we couldn't get in any details on their specific budget. Uh, but judging by the components they've used and the materials they've used, we can say that our aircraft is significantly cheaper than theirs. The project was uh, divided into the spring, summer, and fall semester. The spring semester involved mostly designing the aircraft. The summer semester will involve uh, manufacturing and testing the aircraft, and the fall semester will involve finalizing uh, our design. Just, just to conclude, we would like to create a low-cost, Impacted way that's sustainable to transport goods around the world. To make this happen, we have to do more testing though to ensure stability in our structure and aerodynamics. Just to add, we, we know that sustainable to, the sustainable engineering will be more to become more relevant if we really want our engineering degree. With all that, it's open for any questions. Do you guys plan on a Present from this at our conference if they go to well. Oh, uh, some of research paper. We haven't made any plans yet on presenting at our conference at the moment. Um, we're just focusing on uh, our. We, we still want to flesh out the like, design a bit more and run some more analysis. Okay. Um, the concept, so, so to make the concept actually work, the question I ask is around uh, how are you going to strategize um, the actual flight and, and landing in a given location? As far as um, <coughs> the, so as far as strategizing? You're, you're, you're talking about hand launch, you're right. talking about flying to a height and gliding to a position. Yes. When you say that, the ultimate goal is to put that drone in a, in a given location. Yes. Because it can't, you know, if it's got a commercial application in the U.S., it's got to go to somewhere. Right. If it's if it's a humanitarian use, it's got to get to the right place. Right. So there's got to be a strategy on how you plan to determine how to get from A to B 
uh, and it, because how high you fly, how far you glide, all of that's important to get to get to finished position. All right. So there are um, <coughs> commercially available uh, flight control systems that we want to use in the future. But our initial um, idea for this is to have a remote control, um, just to get an, 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 a, a decent proof of concept. Okay, but when you do your testing, right? Because you've got testing in here, right? You've got to show us that you can get from a pre-described position to a pre-described position uh, that you define, and you measure the error. So you come back to us and you start to explain to us why, if you designed it to go from A to B, it didn't get at B, why didn't it get there? So I'm expecting in the testing that you demonstrate that the system is functioning. Another option we have is to put an FPV system in the aircraft. How you do that is, is your, your part of your task here. But I, but I do want you to come back next time and make sure that you can say to us, we designed this design, one of its functions was to go from here to here. We, we created that, we tested it, and we either had good, perfect results or we had something that deviated, and whatever it is, you come back and explain. Okay, is that fair? Understand? So my question is, how do you make sure that the cardboard um, follows exactly, let's say, the profile that you're uh, simulating and that it won't um, collapse or something during the flight? So that's, um, we're not counting on it collapsing during flight as far as uh, during flight itself, but we are taking into account that the airflow shape won't be consistent throughout different uses. So that's why we're simulating a worst case scenario um, with the with the low performing airflow, um, and it's as closely, it's it's very closely approach. It very closely approaches the general airflow shape you get when you fold uh, something like this yourself, which we've done through our own testing. When we we folded uh, some cardboard pieces into an airframe and, and uh, observed how the shape ends up, and it ends up with usually uh, I don't know if you noticed a flat bottom. Airfoil with the with the curve on top. Additionally, we can uh, help with the air airfoil shape by making a fold and uh, aligning it with that fold, depending on how we want it, how we want the airfoil shape. It won't be perfect depending on how you place it, but we get a good approximation of what you are going to be folding. Have you looked at different kinds of cardboard? I know when I open a box, some of it's yeah. pretty squishy. Right. So some we, of it's double box, some of it's single box. At the moment, we've uh, looked at uh, some heavy duty cardboard, which is dual layered and also single layered cardboard. And we're planning on mixing those as far as in, as we go further along our, our research. So, what we found is that uh, for structural stability, we could use uh, the, the double layered cardboard because it's able to handle pretty high loads. And as far as maintaining the shape of the airflow, we can use single layer cardboard because it's easily to, to shape it into a, into, a, into whatever shape you want. Right. Are you going to paint this when you're done? Like put dope on it, or you know, like when you make model planes? So um, as Western was saying, uh, we um, we don't necessarily have uh, images that we want to put on the plane necessarily. However, uh, we do want the markings for the instructions on how to fold and create the plane. And the hydrophobic coating. And the hydrophobic uh, coating will be applied afterwards so that the water doesn't soak in and ruin the plane during uh, flight in rain conditions. <coughs> and, and finally, are, is this going to compete with the uh, Amazon drones that deliver the boxes to my front door or the, like pizza, <coughs> the pizza place? We like to offer a cheaper, uh, cheaper alternative to those because we know that those are very expensive. And uh, it's a high risk of using those drones in case of a crash, whereas this has a bit lower risk because it's a simple cardboard air that can be easily replaced. Okay, so it delivers the pizza to my front door. Right. Okay, and what do I do with it then? Thank you for the pizza, do I relaunch it somewhere? So uh, the, the nice thing about the cardboard is it can be uh, easily disposed of, and uh, as far as the uh, avionics package, because that's the modular attachment that we're planning on attaching, uh, we can allow that to be 
sent back to the to the post office. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, one of the, one of the thought processes of mine. Okay, wait a minute. The I'm, commercial use. I have trouble opening the pizza box and throwing it away. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to take this funny little gizmo and stick it in the box and nail it? Do you think that's going to work? Um, do you think somebody like me is going to do that? Of course not. They'll have instructions. <laughs> It will have instructions. It, it, um, it, so, just like how Amazon includes return shipping labels with their with their returnable products, we would we would try to include that. But again, that's for the commercial use mostly, um, and there has to be a way to return the avionics package to the to the sender uh, at the end. But we do understand that it's a little a bit of a hassle. Um, but it's an alternative to having the risk of a more expensive drone. I guess my drive there is, where is this going to be used most effectively on a so commercial our, basis? On a commercial basis? Our, our, our primary use for this is for delivering humanitarian aid, like you said, such as medical supplies and uh, maybe food and water, because that's what the zipline drone also does, which is what we compared ours to. Okay. Um, however, we were also told this might have some great commercial applications, so we took that into consideration at least. Too. How about military? I, I would think you got a cardboard thing that's not worth a lot of money. Right. You, you carry a 15-pound bomb on there and drive it in somewhere, it blows up. It's not a big deal. Right. Yeah. But on the other hand, I could also see terrorism using this kind of thing to fly. We got bad enough that people carry it around, just think about flying it around. So. Right. That's Sounds people, like some we hope we do hope that it's it, it doesn't end up being used like that. Everyone does uh, our 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 use case, our initial the our initial motivation behind this was to provide aid to to people in need in in desert locations, remote locations. Okay. Then can your final presentation expand on that? Do some research on where you could usually really use it, right. how you would use it, because delivering a pizza doesn't sound like like I say, I'm not going to package that right. Yep. And from a military standpoint, probably the military applications would be usable, but that would be an interesting look at it anyway. Thank Anyways. You. Thank you. Just to make a comment on what you were saying, well, you can actually do video tutorials and put it on YouTube. So you don't need to have an actual instructor manual. You can do very visual things, and you can apply it to any industry and see how they're made. <laughs> so it's applicable to any industry if you have the open source. Um, you know, you can also have the open source with a manual and instruction videos online, so anyone can use this. Right? Make it open source. Thank you. Yeah.